Okay, here we are, lesson two, lecture. Um, today we're going to talk about momentum. Uh, let's go to the notes. There it is, momentum. And uh, momentum is a, it's kind of a way of quantifying inertia, how much inertia something has. It describes how hard it is to stop something that's already moving or how hard it is to get something to move that is presently not already moving or at rest. Um, it, there are essentially two things that influence the amount of momentum something has. And if you look at the equation here, it says momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So the two things are mass, how big it is, how much mass it in involves moving, and how fast it's moving, okay? So um, it's a vector quantity and it has direction and it has direction because it has velocity in the equation. The velocity is a vector quantity and so momentum is a vector quantity. Please notice the symbol for momentum. It looks like a P, looks like a P, it's not. It is referred to the symbol rho, R-H-O, rho. Okay, so please don't go around calling it P equals MV because that just makes you look unintelligent. It's rho equals MV. Also notice here the units for momentum. Since it's mass times velocity, the mass is in kilograms, the velocity is in meters per second. So when you multiply kilograms times meters per second, you get a strange units of kilogram meters per second kilogram meters per second, okay? So momentum, mass times velocity, it gives you this thing, this, this value that tells you how difficult it is to stop that object. Clearly, it's easier to stop something that is moving slowly, low velocity, or stop something that is moving, that is very small, right? If I had a watermelon and I was gonna throw it at you, or a little p and I was going to throw it at you and I gave you the choice, you would choose the p. It's going to hurt less when it hits you. On the other hand, if I take a little small piece of metal like this, put it in a long tube and cause an explosion at one end of the tube that thus causes that little small piece of metal to become ejected out the other end of the tube, also known as a firearm, you'd be very afraid of that little small piece of metal. That's because it has incredible amounts of velocity and therefore enough momentum to do some damage when it hits you, right? So mass times velocity. You can increase your momentum by having mass and velocity. A train going down a tray track is huge, very, very, very large mass. And so even at slow velocities, it has a huge amount of momentum and will take a long time and a lot of energy to stop it, okay? So mass times velocity. Now, here we go, impulse. The change in the amount of momentum is known as impulse. Delta rho, see right here? Delta rho, change in momentum, it's impulse. And right now we have this golf ball sitting on a tee. It's not moving, so its velocity is zero, so it has momentum of zero. You come along and if you have any amount of skill, you swing a golf club and your club makes contact with that ball, it's going to give that ball or transfer some of the momentum from the club head, this, this thing here, to the little ball, and that ball is gonna suddenly take off. It's going to change the momentum of the ball, okay? The impact of the club and the ball causes a transfer of momentum from the club to the ball. The club will slow down a bit in the collision, the ball will speed up in the collision. Okay, so during that collision, it essentially needs two things to happen. The club has to apply a force to the ball, and that force has to occur over a duration of time, force times time. Now, any sport that you play, tennis, golf, baseball, where you're hitting a ball with a racket, a club, a bat, whatever, Anytime you have to swing an object to hit a ball, your coach is gonna tell you two things. 
always two things. Keep your eye on the ball and follow through. Now, keeping your eye on the ball is simply advice to just actually make contact with the ball. But following through influences this time, the T in this equation. Following through in your swing allows the maximum contact time between the ball and the club, and therefore the maximum transfer of energy and the maximum transfer of momentum to the ball. So the change in momentum is equal to force times time. Now, change in momentum can be calculated another way too, right? Change in anything in physics is always final minus initial. So a change in momentum could always also be momentum final minus momentum initial. Let's look at that possibility. Here's change in momentum is equal to momentum final minus initial. And of course, if it's momentum final, it must be mass times velocity final. If it's momentum initial, it must be mass times velocity initial. I simplified that mathematically slightly by factoring out the m, and I have mass onto velocity final minus initial. That's also another way to, change, to calculate impulse. Notice that if you go back a page, that the units for impulse are the same as the units for uh, momentum, or you can use this new unit called a newton second. And a newton second is the same as a kilogram meters per second. They're the same kind of unit. They're called equivalent units. Newton seconds, kilogram meters per second. So here's an, an example question. Contact time between a golf ball and a golf club on impact is 0.15 seconds. The force is applied to a 40 gram golf ball on impact. Oh, sorry, what force is applied to that 40 gram ball on impact? If the ball's club speed immediately after the impact is 200 meters per second. So before impact, it's zero. After it's 200 meters per second. So then you're going to see in our solution here, I'm going to use the equation change momentum is momentum final minus initial. And the reason I selected that is because I have information in the question regarding my initial and final velocities. Initial was zero, final was 200. I also know the mass of the ball that is gaining that velocity. It's 400 grams or 0 0.04 kilograms. And lastly, I know the contact time. So when you'll see here for change in momentum, I've replaced that with the other equation for impulse change in momentum, FT. So this equation and that equation are both equations for delta rho. They have to be equal to each other. So FT is equal to mass times final velocity minus mass times initial velocity simplified in the next line and then substitute. Time is 0.15, mass is 0.04, Final velocity is 200, initial velocity was zero. Run the math and we get 53 newtons. 53 newtons of force applied for 0.15 seconds will cause that golf ball to go flying off at 200 meters per second. You can see that the force isn't massive, but that contact time is really important. And really, the big difference between a pro golfer on the tour and someone like me golfing on the weekend is only a few hundredths of a second additional contact time in their swing. In that extra couple hundredths of a second, they get tons more distance, tons more power, way more control, all of that. And that's why this swing in golf, tennis, baseball, whatever, the swing is all important. Okay, next day we're gonna talk about um, another aspect of momentum and that, mom and that is that momentum is conserved. So just like all the other conservation laws, momentum can be conserved, all right? Short lesson, that's it for today.